haunted houses, abandoned asylums, and of course, cemeteries. These are all tried and true, some might say cliche, settings for a horror movie. We have seen all of these dozens of times, and that's fine. A lot of the best movies of all time revolve around these or other classic situations. Here, on the best horror movie you never saw, though, we are always looking for the lesser-known movies, the ones that could be classics. Today's episode takes one of these familiar settings, a cemetery, and adds a very familiar creature, the zombie, and tweaks the formula just enough. It does this while adding enough what the f moments and going completely off the rails to keep you glued for all 100 minutes of its runtime. Today, we go back nearly 30 years to visit Cemetery Man. The movie comes to us from a somewhat unlikely place. It's an Italian, French, and German production. Wait, don't turn off the video yet. The movie has been dubbed in English and stars an English actor in the lead. It's brought to us by Italian director Michela Soovi. And while that name doesn't stand out like Lucio Fulci or Dario Argento, he's an important part of Italian horror. Soovi himself had quite the run behind the camera as well. He wrote and directed a documentary on his idol and collaborator Argento called Dario Argento's World of Horror in 1985. He quickly followed that up with Stage Fright, The Church, and The Sect from 1987 to 1991. While those movies never received theatrical releases in the US, Cemetery Man popped up in multiple art house theaters in 1996 and was a video store darling quickly after. So, what makes this movie so special and different? Let's take a look. Cemetery Man follows the life and work of Francesco de la Morte, who is the caretaker at the small town of Buffalora. His only friends are a municipal clerk named Franco and his mentally disabled assistant, Nagi, who understands things but can only utter the phrase, nah. He spends his free time attempting to reassemble a broken skull and crossing out the names of the dead from outdated phone books. While that sounds like an entirely mundane existence, Francesco's life becomes much more exciting at night. At some point within seven days of being buried in the Buffalora Cemetery, the dead bodies rise up and become aggressive. Instead of zombies, though, these undead visitors are called returners by our main character. Some of them can speak or drive makeshift vehicles, but they still go down in the traditional way of a bullet to the brain or the head being separated. Their bite doesn't turn the living into the undead either, but they can kill you quickly all the same. Since he doesn't have that many friends to chat with, most of our story exposition comes through his own inner monologue delivered thoughtfully by our lead. That happens to be English actor Rupert Everett. Everett had been appearing on the small screen since 1982, but this would be the start of something special. The same year Cemetery Man came out, Everett would appear in the Oscar-winning The Madness of King George. A few years later, he would co-star in the wildly popular Julia Roberts comedy My Best Friend's Wedding. This would lead him jumping back and forth between romantic comedies like The Next Best Thing and more proper British comedy adaptations like An Ideal Husband and A Midsummer Night's Dream. His booming popularity in the late 90s would have him approach director Soovi about an American remake of Cemetery Man, but both this and a planned sequel that the director wanted in 2011 never materialized. An English-speaking actor working in an Italian horror movie is certainly nothing new. Other big names such as Donald Pleasance, Christopher Lee, and Barbara Steele made entirely separate careers working in foreign language films. While Everett plays our title character, it may be Finnish Italian actress Anna Falci that steals the show. The stunning actress plays three separate characters, the loves of Francesco's life, all aptly named She. Falci has worked steadily the past 25 years, but this movie almost certainly is her claim to fame. While Mickey Knox and Clive Ritchie, who play the detective and Franco, have had decent careers in genre films, the other actor our audience might recognize is the man behind Nagi. Francois Hodge Lazaro also appeared in both The City of Lost Children and early 2000s best movie you never saw, Brotherhood of the Wolf. He plays the comic relief to Francesco's straight man, but also has the biggest heart of any of the characters we meet on screen. Francesco, or the engineer as the mayor refers to him, has his life turned upside down when he encounters She for the first time, the widow of a man buried in his cemetery. She becomes the object of desire for Francesco, and when he finally gets her, his plan is derailed when the undead husband returns to claim his wife. She dies and eventually comes back, only to be put down like all the other returners, or so we think. She comes back again 
and Francesco has to shoot her after she bites him. This sends him into a depression after he realizes that it was probably him that killed her in the first place. The cemetery gets more and more busy as the mayor's daughter perishes in a freak motorcycle accident along with many other riders. The stakes continue to rise as Nagi had fallen in love with the mayor's daughter and isn't about to let a little thing like death get in his way. Francesco has to deal with more and more aggressive returners and is even questioned in multiple deaths. The mayor, a grieving biker girl, and a couple of prostitutes all die in mysterious ways that lead back to Francesco. But each time, there is a reason that he couldn't be the culprit, even if that reason is simply that the police don't believe he could do it. These situations play into the other reason why this movie works so well and is so unique. Much of the film plays like a pitch black comedy, from returners yelling at or making fun of Francesco to sudden outbursts of Looney Tunes levels of violence. This movie takes its subject matter seriously, but presents it in a comical, almost dreamlike manner. This can be traced back to the very origins of the story itself. It was based on a novel by Italian author Tiziano Sclavi, and it's no shock if you haven't heard that name before. I would wager that you have heard of his most famous work though, as he created the comic series Dylan Dog, which ran for over 300 issues and was turned into a feature film by Hollywood in 2010. Unfortunately, the movie was a massive bomb, losing about 15 million, but that's a story for another day. The property is on track to get the TV series treatment that so many other properties have received lately. Francesco becomes more unhinged and dreams that he goes into town to kill the gang that started a rumor of his impotency, a long-running gag that gets him in and out of trouble. This is after death itself visits him and asks him to stop killing the dead. The police inspector accuses his assistant rather than him, even though his car was spotted in town that night. The movie really goes off the rails when Nagi starts dating the reanimated severed head of the mayor's daughter who ends up killing her father. He meets the second incarnation of she when an assistant from the new mayor comes to visit. While she is instantly attracted to Francesco, she tells him that she is terrified of sex, and so he goes to get a procedure done. The next day, she tells him that the new mayor helped her get over her fears of sex and has decided to stay with him. His love life dashed again, Francesco goes into town and kills more people before meeting the final version of she. While he sleeps with her and finally thinks he has it all figured out, it is revealed that she is a prostitute. This revelation makes him spiral and he kills her and her friend by burning down the apartment. Finally ready to accept his consequences, the police assume it was his friend Franco who committed the crime after murdering his wife and child before attempting suicide. Francesco kills three people in the hospital in increasingly over-the-top ways before screaming out his confession that lands on deaf ears. The police captain even tells him to flee as there is a madman on the loose. Francesco and Nagi leave only to end up in a car accident when the roads suddenly split. When they come to, they have switched roles, and Francesco can only speak one word while Nagi can finally be verbal. Yeah. The movie, originally released as Della Morte Della More, which translates to Of Death of Love, was picked up for US release by American distributor October Films. Two years after its international release, it came out to a limited number of theaters where its name was changed to the more American-friendly Cemetery Man. It was reviewed decently on release, with a 61% on Rotten Tomatoes, and none other than Martin Scorsese naming it as one of the top Italian films of the 1990s. The film is more appreciated now than on its initial release, but sadly, director Soovi never reached the heights of his late 80s, early 90s stretch again. While he has been a steady director of made-for-television films, he only has three theatrical releases since this movie hit the big screen. The film has also appreciated in another way, its value. Sadly, another glaring reason why this movie puts the never in best horror movie you never saw is that it's damn hard to come by. It hasn't had a Region 1 DVD since 2006 that is long out of print and far too overpriced. You could go on the international releases of which there are both Blu-ray and DVD versions, but that brings up another new hassle with what to play it on. While the film did exist on DVD, VHS and even Laserdisc, finding one is tough. Even in 2002, there is no current legal way to stream it, which makes it incredibly hard to find. While we wait for Severin Films or Arrow to pick up distribution rights for a packed Blu-ray or 4K, the movie needs to be talked about more so more horror hounds can discover this unique 90s mashup. If, for some reason, the rights stay tied up, let's go full-blown remake. 
If Dylan Dog, of all things, can get a TV remake, why can't we get the return of Delamorte Delamore with Everett and Soovi on board to bring us back to the Buffalo Cemetery one last time?